In this lesson, we are going to learn how to solve logarithmic equations. The goal in solving logarithmic equations is to transform the equation to exponential form. Because remember from our previous lessons, we already know how to solve exponential equations. The first thing that we have to do is to put all the terms involving logarithm to one side of the equation. And then you need to condense it to a single logarithm. Once you already have a single logarithm, meaning to say you have something of this form, you can now transform this into exponential form. For the last step, you have to make sure that the solution set that you obtained will make the expression inside your logarithm positive. Otherwise, it means that it is not a part of the solution set. Because remember that for logarithmic functions, if you have logarithm of star, star has to be strictly greater than zero. Let us consider our first example. Let us solve log of 4x minus 7 to the base 3 equals 2. Note that you only have a single logarithm here, so we're already done with steps 1 and 2. So now we can transform this to exponential form. The base here is 3, the exponent is 2, and our power is 4x minus 7. So we have 9 equals 4x minus 7, hence we have 16, which gives us that x is equal to 4. For the checking, just make sure that the input 4x minus 7, when x is equal to 4, is greater than 0. We have 4 times 4 minus 7, this is equal to 9, and of course that is greater than 0. So hence, our solution set is the set containing 4. Another example, log of 125 to the base 5 equals 3x plus 1. If you transform this into an exponential equation, you will have 5 raised to 3x plus 1 is equal to 125. The factorization of 125 is 5 cubed. So therefore, we have the same base. Therefore, 3x plus 1 is equal to 3. And this gives us 3x equals 2, and therefore, x is equal to 2 thirds. Another example, we have log of x squared minus 17 to the base 2 equals 3. Our variable here appears inside the logarithm, so therefore, we have to convert this to exponential form. Our base is 2, our exponent is 3, and the power is x squared minus 17. This gives us 8 equals x squared minus 17, therefore 25 is x squared. When we solve for x, remember you should get plus or minus the square root of 25. Does this mean that the solution is just x equals 5 because it's positive? The answer is no. All you have to check is that the expression inside your logarithm is positive. If x is equal to 5 or negative 5, your x squared minus 17 will always be positive. So therefore, our solution set would be 5 and negative 5. Next, let us consider the logarithm of 64 to the base x equals 2. Again, we transform this to exponential form. Our base is x. Our exponent is 2. This is equal to the power which is 64. This gives us that x is plus or minus 8. However, notice here that x is the base of your logarithm. If you are the base of the logarithm, remember that it has to be greater than 0. So hence, the solution set here is just 
the set containing 8. We cannot have logarithm of 64 to the base negative 8. For our next example, we now have two terms involving the logarithm. So now we can use the first step. The first step is to collect all the terms involving logarithm. I will just transpose 3 on the right side. And then for step 2, we convert this into a single logarithm. Since this is a plus here, we multiply these two inputs. So we have 5 times 3x minus 5 to the base 2 is equal to 3. And therefore, we can now transform this into an exponential equation. Our base is 2, our exponent is 3, and the answer is 5 times 3x minus 5. This is just a linear equation. We get that x is equal to 33 over 15. Take note that we just have to check that the expression inside your logarithm is positive. When x is equal to 33 over 15, our 3x minus 5 becomes 18 over 5, which is positive. So that is correct. Our solution set is... 33 over 15. For our next example, we have two terms involving logarithms and they are already isolated on this side of the equation. So we now proceed to step two, which is to convert them to a single logarithm. This is plus, so I just multiply the inputs x minus 1 and 3x plus 1. Transforming this to exponential form, we get 2 squared. This is the base 2. This is our exponent. This is equal to the power. x minus 1 times 3x plus 1. This is just a quadratic equation. Setting one side to 0 gives us... 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. The right-hand side can be factored as 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. Setting each of these factors to 0, we get that x is equal to 5 thirds or x is equal to negative 1. Remember that you still have to check. You have x minus 1 and 3x plus 1 as inputs in your original equation. Make sure that when you are checking, you substitute the values to your original equation. When x is equal to 5 thirds, 5 thirds minus 1, that is 2 thirds, so that's greater than 0, and you have 3x plus 1, this is also greater than 0. If x is negative 1, you will have negative 1 minus 1 for x minus 1, and this is less than 0, which means that x equals negative 1 is not a solution of your equation. Hence, our solution set is just a set containing 5 thirds. It is very important that you check 
that the values that you obtain for x will make your inputs for your logarithms positive. Next, let us consider 2 ln x plus 3 equals 7. First, we isolate the term involving ln x. This becomes 7 minus 3 is 4. Dividing both sides by 2, we get ln x is equal to 2. ln is just logarithm base e. If you want, you can write that. Log of x base e equals 2. Transforming this to exponential form, we get e raised to 2. That's our exponent. This is our base. The answer is equal to x. When you check, e squared is positive. So the input for ln is positive. Next, we have 2 times ln x minus 1 equals 3. I will divide both sides by 2 to isolate ln of x minus 1. And transform this again to exponential form. Our base is e. Our exponent is 3 halves. This is equal to the power x minus 1. So we get that x is equal to e raised to 3 halves plus 1. When you check, you just check that your x minus 1 is positive. e to the 3 halves plus 1 minus 1 is e to the 3 halves, which is really positive. So hence, this is your solution. For our next logarithm, take note that this is a bit different from our previous examples because all of these terms involve logarithm. You have no constant term. Again, you can still proceed with collecting all the terms involving logarithm on one side of the equation and the constant on the right hand side would be zero however what i do when all of the terms involve logarithm my goal here is to put it in this form log of something equals log of another thing recall that the logarithmic function is a one-to-one -one function if the logarithm of star equals the logarithm of heart, it means that these two inputs must be equal. Let us apply this in this example. Condense this to a single logarithm. We get log of x plus 4 over x minus 1. equals log of x minus 4. This is a fraction because we have minus here. So therefore, from this one, we can now equate the two inputs for the logarithm. So we get x plus 4 over x minus 1 is equal to x minus 4. This is just a rational equation. Multiplying both sides by x minus 1, we get x plus 4 equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. Solving this quadratic equation, we get x squared minus 6x equals 0 which can be factored as x times x minus 6. This gives us that x equals 0 or x equals 6. Can x be equal to 0? No, because 0 minus 1 is negative. Can x be equal to 6? Let us check. You have here 6 plus 4. That's okay. 6 minus 1, that's also positive. 6 minus 4 is 2, that's also positive. Hence, the only solution to this equation is 
x equals 6. Next, we have another equation without a constant term. So again, we will make use of the following. First, we have to make sure that we do not have any coefficients. So let us turn 2 as an exponent of x minus 4. We need to condense this into a single logarithm and this is plus. So therefore, we multiply x plus 1 and x minus 2. Since we have ln of something equals ln of another thing, we can now equate these two inputs. We expand the left-hand side as x squared minus x minus 2. And the right-hand side becomes x squared minus 8x plus 16 x squared will be cancelled, we will get 7x equals 18. So x is equal to 18 over 7. Let us check if this is a solution. If x is equal to 18 over 7, x minus 4 would be negative 10 over 7, which is negative. So therefore, for this equation, we have no solution.